SpaceX's Starship is destined for great things. After taking NASA's astronauts to the moon, Musk will use it to transport his colonizers to Mars. However, none of that can happen unless the Starship is proclaimed ready. This is why SpaceX is racing to send the Starship prototype on its first orbital flight. In this video, we'll explore the Starship prototype S-20's readiness for its first flight. SpaceX has carried out numerous tests of its Starship prototypes to varying degrees of success. The last major test was on prototype SN15 and qualified as a success as the Starship managed to land as expected without combusting. The next major test will be more demanding on the Starship as it is going to reach orbit. The S-20 prototype will be mounted on the Super Heavy Booster 4 for the flight. One of the demands on the S-20 is how it will handle the heat generated when it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. Since all previous tests have been suborbital, this is the first time SpaceX is testing that part of its design. Three minutes into the flight, the upper stage will separate from the lower stage and continue into orbit before returning to the Earth. This is as close as SpaceX can get to the real-world performance of the Starship. SpaceX already knows the risk involved in the Starship returning from space travel and has taken steps to protect it. Shielding the S-20 prototype are the black hexagonal tiles that cover the part of the hulking steel structure that will face the heat. The size of dinner plates, they are made from ceramic and attached by hand to the surface of the S-20 prototype. Here is how SpaceX fixed the tiles. Three pins or studs hold each tile. The pins are welded onto the steel body of the Starship directly. Embedded inside each tile is a small metal plate. A tile is aligned and pressed against each set of pins, making them lock in place irreversibly. Before suppressing the tiles on the pins, SpaceX has tacked on blankets of ceramic wool insulation to help further keep the heat out. SpaceX's method is straightforward compared to other spacecraft that have used heat-resistant tiles like the Space Shuttle and Russian Buran. SpaceX already knows how fragile the tiles are because the first time the upper and lower stages were stacked, some of the 15,000 tiles broke, moved, or were otherwise damaged. Workers painstakingly fixed each affected tile by hand using a set of colors to denote the action to be taken on each tile. After the second appearance of the S-20 prototype on the launch site, SpaceX ran into problems again with the tiles during a venting test. Even before SpaceX could completely clear its workers off the launch pad, the tiles started flying off during a brief test of high-pressure cold gas maneuvering thrusters. From photos posted on Twitter, the areas around the cone of the Starship were bare of tiles. Musk himself confirmed the mishap in reply to the tweet above. He explained a headed tank vent knocked off what he called a few tiles. This is easily confirmed from the pictures as the spots where the tiles fell off were close to where the cold gas maneuvering thrusters are located. Apparently, the event didn't seriously affect SpaceX's plans. Fixing it doesn't even require an overhauling of the Starship's design. A few days after the mishap of the flying tiles, SpaceX carried out a cryogenic test on the S-20 prototype. This exercise was needed to track how the prototype would behave when loaded with liquid fuel. In the place of fuel, SpaceX loaded the prototype with hundreds of tons of liquid nitrogen. Here was where attention was supposed to be paid to the tiles to see how they coped. This is because when liquid nitrogen is loaded into the tanks, the cold temperature makes the steel structure contract, which could cause the tiles to press against one another and likely break or crack. Here is how SpaceX carries out cryogenic tests. It applies to both the upper and lower stage prototypes. The vehicle is connected to pad systems, powered on, and partially or fully loaded with cryogenic fluids. When the test objectives are achieved or there is a failure, the fuel is drained from the vehicle. That is all as it is not a complicated process, but as the process progresses, the Starship prototype will show visual changes. For example, the steel body of the prototype will be covered in frost or ice. This phenomenon is due to the supercooled steel body freezing water vapor out of the humid air. That is not the only noticeable change because, at a point, the prototype will produce a vent of gas. This is due to changes inside the tanks. When the cooled liquid nitrogen touches the sides of the prototype, which are at ambient temperature, it will boil off into gas. Note that compared to the supercooled temperature of the liquid nitrogen or fuel, the ambient temperature of the steel body and the plumbing will be white hot. This is why the liquid nitrogen boils. The venting of gas is necessary to maintain the pressure inside the tank in the recommended range. If this does not happen, it could be catastrophic. SpaceX, however, departed from its usual way of doing cryogenic tests this time. Nevertheless, Musk announced on Twitter that it went well on the first try. 
For the records, there was no reported incident of the tiles flying off, meaning they handled the contraction and expansion of the prototype very well. So, SpaceX can scratch off cryogenic testing as the S-20 marches toward the orbital flight. The S-20 prototype will fly with six Raptor engines attached, a mixture of sea level and vacuum variants when the day comes. But before being cleared, SpaceX will carry out static fire tests. This could be done gradually by firing two or three engines before using all six engines, even when all the six Raptors are installed. But that depends on if SpaceX wants to carry out multiple fire tests. One factor that might come into play is the launch area. If the launch mountain pad are not equipped for orbital launches, SpaceX might not be able to test all six Raptors together. In that case, SpaceX can test the Raptor Center and Raptor Vacuum engines separately, meaning two different tests. In preparation for this, SpaceX has moved in several Raptor engines to the launch area. At least, there is one sea level variant and one vacuum variant in this delivery. SpaceX has three possible static fire test windows scheduled between 5 p.m. and midnight on October 12th to 14th, according to road closure notices given by Cameron County. For tests like this, SpaceX gets the road and Boca Chica Beach closed for safety reasons. SpaceX cancelled the road closure on Monday, October 7th, so we won't be surprised if any of these road closures are cancelled too, meaning no static fire test. However, there is a good chance for static fire tests taking place soon. To date, SpaceX has never fired more than three Raptor engines on a prototype, so when that happens on the S-20, it will be a milestone. Speaking of milestones, this will be the first time SpaceX has fired both sea level and vacuum types of Raptors on the same prototype. At any rate, prototype S-20 will be a massive moment for SpaceX in its Starship development. That being the case, SpaceX is already looking beyond the S-20 as it is already working on Prototype S-21 and Super Heavy Booster 5. Obviously, based on lessons learned from earlier developments, SpaceX is approaching the new prototypes differently. For example, some tasks are going on concurrently, like the heat-resistant tiles that SpaceX delayed during the S-20 development, workers are fixing them while the different segments are assembled. Similarly, on the Booster 5 prototype, SpaceX is doing the plumbing, wiring, and avionics as it is assembling, instead of waiting for the process to be completed. This has accelerated the pace of development so much that the new prototypes could catch up with S-20 and Booster 4. If that happens, SpaceX will have two orbit-worthy pairs of prototypes and may have to decide which one to use for the test. The decision is not in the immediate future, though, as all indications show the orbital flight test will no longer occur this year. Due to delays from the FAA in approving SpaceX's permits, we could be looking at a 2022 orbital flight. Musk is even pleading with his fans on Twitter to show their support by responding to the FAA's request for public comment. What effect this delay will have on NASA's timetable for its mission to the moon, where it plans to use the Starship to land its astronauts, remains to be seen, but it appears NASA is fighting its own readiness battle too, as it is still working on the uniforms for its astronauts. Let us know if you think the S-20 prototype is finally ready for an orbital test flight in the comments.